really high. So if you take a deep breath, hit that really high note, or at least try and hit that really high note. If you got to drop an octave or two, that'd be just fine. 249, all three verses. Oh, 
that song is for some of us tonight. Either are weary, come home. And I'm, I'm weary of a few things happening in life tonight, but I'm also physically weary every now and then. But I'm glad I can go to Him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest in your soul. For my yoke is easy and my birth. I thank the way of God that invites us to do that. Got a few announcements here this morning. I want to begin with praise the Lord for six visitors this morning. Praise God for that. And uh, they, they came in all sorts of different ways. One was Ursula brought her good friend. Ursula's been coming for a while now and just loves our church. And Mrs. Daughter's been around her, I think, and getting a haircut or something like that. Is that correct? And by her, she's been coming. Now she brought one of her friends to praise the Lord for that. Uh, and then this other one, Leo and uh, uh, Charisma Lovato, uh, sent by God to my dad to go knock on the door of a follow-up visit. And the neat thing, I mean, not neat thing, but sad in a way, the lady that had visited our church had moved out. The new family said, well, we just moved here from Denver. We were part of Baptist Church up there. So we'll be there tomorrow. And sure enough, they showed up, praise God, for that. And then the other one's Robert and Yvonne Aragon. The neat thing about that was after they had left, and so friendly, and they enjoyed the church and stayed for a little while after, I found out two really neat things. Found out one is they're looking for, they had found, they had found another church, but it wasn't the King James Church. Amen. They're looking for one that's King James. I know one. And also, Yvonne was a bus kid. On the urge his bus route. And no bus. And so that's kind of a neat thing. And with that in mind, don't forget, we I had planned on showing a video this morning about the bus ministry. And me and technology get along about as well as me and cats. And so it didn't work out for this morning. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna not guilt trip, but encourage her to come back uh, as part of the bus ministry to show it's a long video, it's like 13 minutes long. Uh, and it will mention the name North Valley Baptist Church, but that's just because it was their video from one of their own church. But it will still work here. A lot of good questions about is it worth it? Is the bus ministry still relevant? Is it worth our time? Is it worth our money? And answers at the very end with a lot of this. I'm a bus kid. I'm a bus kid. And we have some here tonight that were bus kids. We're thankful for those well that will be here next Sunday. What I'm trying to do is get us more excited about the bus ministry and bringing people, not just kids, but other people. My dad was telling a story yesterday about a lady they used to pick up on the bus route in Tucson. They got saved at a Billy Sunday crusade. So you, you think I kind of poke fun of my dad at being old because he knows somebody who knew somebody who got saved in the Billy Graham crusade. I'm not, not Billy Graham, Billy Sunday crusade. Billy Sunday was alive a few years ago. And so isn't it great? It's not just kids need to ride the bus. This was an older lady who just loved riding the bus. So let's do the same thing. Really promote that, get that bus ministry back up and going again. We're thankful for the 12 riders we had today. But we are way down. Let's just pray that it gets back up very, very quickly. Don't forget, uh, the Our Time Youth Conference starts this Wednesday night. And so we'll let all the young people know exactly what time they need to be here. I'm guessing right around 5 o'clock. And on Wednesday night, Brian and Elizabeth will be taking a good group up there. And then Thursday and Friday as well. And my wife's going on Thursday and Friday with them too. So pray for them this week that God can speak to our heart. It starts Thursday to Wednesday night. And then it's all day Thursday into Thursday night. And then it's Friday morning. So pray for the young people, please. They're going to have a great time. A lot of fun. A lot of uh, know, skits. A lot of games. They go to clips. Have a great time. And now that's fun. But the most important part of it is they get sent a bunch of great preachers. So pray that not just they have a good time, not just that they have uh, safety, but pray that God is speaking to their hearts uh, this week during the youth conference. And then Saturday, of course, we have soul and bus calling. Need help with that this weekend. And then just a couple weeks away on April, no, August the 2nd to the 5th is the youth conference in Oklahoma. You'll, you'll be going to that as well. So please pray uh, for them. Men's fasting and prayer on the 12th and 13th of August coming up right around the corner. Speaking right around the corner, mark your calendars, please. On Labor Day is a good time to have the Labor Day conference at Elvis Baptist Church. So that Monday, which is the 6th of, of September, um, if you don't have plans or if you want to change your plans, it's a great day. It's a long day, but it's well worth it. it, it it's, it'll still be warm in, in September. They have air conditioning up there. They, they allow us to go there for free. They don't charge us anything. We get to go and hear preaching and singing. And yes, they also give out door prices. That George Washington picture on the other side of the wall. Uh, I got. To, I told my wife one year that we have, it's just like the second or third time we've gone. So I'm going to win that picture this year. And I won that picture this year. I've said that every year since we've gone back, and I've never won it again. Or or whatever the big prize was they gave out. I'm thankful we get a chance. I think up until this last one, 
every year the True Life Baptist Church is gone, somebody from the church has won one of the, I don't know if they call them door plate. They don't charge you. They give you. It's not a bingo kind of thing. They give you a little piece of a, a ticket number, and they draw numbers. They give out things. You know, one year they gave out Thomas Kincaid clocks and just some really neat stuff. Uh, but most importantly, there's a lot of preaching and singing goes on that day. And of course, barbecue in the afternoon. So that day, mark your calendar for that. And this isn't on your uh, upcoming events, on your bulletin, but please also don't forget, be in prayer for it. Mark your calendars. Don't go out of town October 15, 16, 17. Friday night, Saturday night, all day Sunday. That's when Pastor McKean will be here preaching our fall revival for us. So please make plans. Don't, don't come up to me the week before. Oh, I won't be here next week because I didn't know. God, I made plans, okay? Please don't do that. Come and, and pray that God would really bring revival that week to our church. I, mean, I wrote this down in my notes tonight. I, I really believe, I believe that we're all kind of like on the edge of something great being ready to happen to that Baptist church. And I'm going to say that just to say it. I really think that God is doing some things in the hearts and lives of our members and us collectively as a group. I think God's getting ready to do something great. One of the reasons I know is because the devil's fighting things like crazy. And so when he fights, I start getting excited about what's God getting ready to do. Because the devil knows. The devil knows that he can fight, but God's really getting ready. So be in prayer for our church. Also pray for that fall revival. I believe that's all the announcements we have tonight. My goal is to get us out of here before 8 o'clock tonight. Anyway, let's pick up on that one. Praise the Lord. Nobody's, nobody's worried about that. So I don't have a long message. I have a lot of notes, not a long message. Let's see what God can do. See what uh, God will speak to our side about faith. Number 427. Let's stand here, please. We're going to sing that 427. Nothing between. We'll sing all the verses. We'll take up our evening offering. Ask our usher to please come that last verse. 427.
All right, and then she walks over and says, Father God, you know, we pick our hearts and draw us closer to you and closer to each other, Lord. I pray that you you help us to, to see you for what you are, the yeah. Lord our God, holy in heaven, Lord. Mm -hmm. And as things we flow from you, let them return to you, Lord. I pray that you receive this blessing and let us receive a blessing, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just have pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
2 Peter chapter number 1. As we continue looking at faith, the Word of God, tonight, 2 Peter chapter 1, we're going to read verses uh, 5 through 7. We'll probably look at a few more verses as well tonight. Some of what we'll talk on or mention tonight will be uh, by way of review, but it's good to be reminded of the importance of faith. As we see here in the book of Peter, where we were told to add to our faith, we know that in the Christian life, faith is foundational and the foundation of something is so very important if your foundation is a mess uh those that know anything about building i was talking about joe about this earlier we've been talking a lot about buildings he's getting me fired up about getting a building getting property finding a place and now uh, he's he's going to help finance it he might help with 10 bucks but he's going to help finance it uh and encouragement to get it going you know, i was talking with him about getting a place and finding and getting the concrete poured it's so important uh, to get that done right. So the concrete's messed up, the rest of the building's messed up. If it's not square, listen, I framed so many houses in my time that we always have to fix the concrete guys out of square a little bit. And then it, it, we blame it on the concrete guys and then the sheetrock guys blame it on the framing guys and then the uh, finished carpenter guys, the cabinet makers, they blame it on somebody else. But it kind of all goes back to if the foundation's a mess, uh, then everything else is a mess. If the foundation isn't right, you're going to be in a big mess in building a house. In here, we want to build something for the glory of God in our personal lives, in our homes, but also at this church, we want to do something great for the glory of God. And all of that must be built on the foundation of faith. As we see here in First Peter, I'm sorry, Second Peter chapter one, verses five through seven. And I like the way Peter says this. And beside this, and here's a great part: giving all diligence. Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Father, thank you for your word. Praise people to hearts tonight. Increase our faith. Help us to grow in our faith, God, that we wouldn't just uh, believe that you can, but we'd step out knowing that you can do some great things in our church. Speak to hearts tonight, I pray, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing for so long. Faith is foundational in the Christian life. Uh, those that will do or have done, especially have done, but those that will do anything great for God in the day we live in. Can I give you a little bit of encouragement tonight? I know we're living in a messed up time, but God, the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament, He's still alive today. His power is still available today. And you've heard this. I know it sounds like a trite statement, but the darker the night, the brighter the light. It's easy. Listen, if I had a, if I was to borrow from Mike Baca his cigarette lighter, and if I held it out right now with a light right now, it wouldn't put off a whole lot of light. But come midnight, if I sat in here in the same room with all the lights turned off and it completely dark outside, that light that's putting out the same amount of light will seem to shine a whole lot brighter. So we ought to be thankful that we can live in a day where everything's such a mess. To where our little light, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. God, it may not be much, but thank God for letting me live in a dark day so that my little light can shine bright for the glory of God. We'll never accomplish that if we don't add to our faith. But in order to add to it, that faith has to be strong to add all these other things on to. The, the lesson tonight is this, add to your faith. Add to your faith. And it lists all these wonderful things that ought to be added to our faith. But we're not going to worry about all those. We might revisit that. I might bring back that theme I had here a few years ago. And add to our faith all these different things. But how about tonight? We just learn to strengthen our faith. Because in order to add to it, it must be strengthened. If we're to add these things such as virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience. Even let's just preach right there for a while, right? Patience, uh, patience, godliness, brotherly love, and then kindness and charity. If we were to do these things, we're to add to our faith. That tells me that faith is of utmost importance. If the Bible told me one time that I'm to live by faith, that's important. But four times in the Bible, specifically Habakkuk 2.4, the Bible says, but the just shall live by his faith. Romans 1.17, the just shall live by faith. Galatians 3.11, the just shall live by faith. Hebrews 10.38, now the just shall live by faith. It's so important for us to learn that if we're going to be pleasing to God, we must live by faith. 
He, Ephesians 6, 16, the Bible there in that great chapter talking about the, uh, the armor for the Christian soldier. Everything's important, but then if you notice where he says, above all. He didn't just say, take the shield of faith. He said, above all, take the shield of faith. In Ephesians 6, 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. It's so important, church, that our faith become stronger. Faith is not, faith is not, well, I just hope everything works out good. No, faith is confidence in the God of heaven who's called us to do something for His glory, knowing that if we do our part, He will do His part. By the way, His part is so much greater than ours, but He expects us to do what we can, then He'll step in and do what we can't. The foundation of faith, add to your faith. Before we go on, I wrote, I wrote a couple things down I wanted to mention before I got preaching, but got so excited about speaking about faith. Uh, I want to just thank everybody who is uh, helping to park across the street. And by the way, one of these days, I'm going to get permission to park over there and make sure it's okay for us to do that. And now that parking across the street, thank you for those that are, but it's not, listen, parking across the street in that parking lot or in the public parking area over here, that is for, that is not, uh, because here's what it's for. We want to save the parking lot right here. We want to save that for the senior saints and all the senior saints, save men right there. And we also want to save it for the moms with kids so they can be right here next to the church. And we want to save it for visitors. So if listen, if you're not a mom with kid, or if you're if you're uh, ad, not advanced in age to where you could get a senior discount, listen, I can get a senior discount, but I'm not really uh, eligible for it. Thank God I'm 47. I've been getting senior discounts for 11 years. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'll take every one I can possibly get. But just because I get senior discounts, I can still park across. I'm just saying, thank you for doing that. We greatly appreciate that. Also, when it comes to church, I wrote this down because I've struggled with this for years. And I'm doing my best to, to, to live by this statement right here. Don't let others determine our spirit at church. Here's what I want to do. I want to, when I come to church, I want to come and have church. I want to come and be excited about what God uh, is going to do in my life that day. And then, and then the devil's going to send somebody, some Johnny rain cloud by and try and make me feel bad about something and make me get upset about something. And I've, I've so uh, worried about that over the years. I'm going to do my best now. And how about this? We just come to church to have church, whether or not anybody else is going to have church. By faith, we know God's going to do something great. That went over real well. So let's just stick with the lesson here tonight. First of all, we see the introduction to faith in Hebrews 11. 1. You're there in Peter. Go to Hebrews. I mentioned if I, we're going to go back to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. The introduction to faith. We looked at some of this here just recently. But by way of reminder tonight, Hebrews 11. 1 tells us what faith is. It's the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith is substance. It's what you can and should build your life upon. Faith is that solid and stable foundation. Faith is where uh, they've gone and they've made sure that all of the compaction tests are done right. They brought in some bedrock and they brought in the right kind of dirt. They didn't just build upon a spot where there's a whole bunch of sand that hadn't been packed down the right way. You know, because if you do that, your house is going to fall apart. Somebody told me that I thought, and hopefully I'm not right, I think I'm saying the right thing here, that parts of Tanawan, anybody know what Tanawan is? Very, very nice area. I get the privilege of going to Tanawan every now and then and taking dumpsters up there for people. I always get so excited because I think those rich people are going to throw junk away. They've gotten rich for a reason. They don't throw anything good away. But it, it costs a lot just to the monthly fees that they charge to live there. But some in that area, they found out that when they first started building some of that, they forgot to tell the developer that it was built over an old landfill. And those beautiful, even in Albuquerque, millions of dollars of homes built over a landfill that was shifting a little bit. They had to go back in there and redo the foundation and fix some of the cracks and problems. Why? Because the foundation wasn't what it needed to be. That's what our faith is. It's foundational. It's what you build your house upon. Peter tells us to add to our faith. That it must be strong if we're to add to it. You see, people want to build a second story on their house. First thing you got to do is make sure that that foundation that's there can 
hold that second and third and fourth and fifth stories. You got the beginning at the bottom end right, the rest is going to be messed up. It also lets us know that our faith needs to grow. Faith is the substance, the Bible says. Number two, the Bible says faith is evidence. Everything that has been proven to be true has been believed by faith first. We can go down the list of all these things that has been the Bible has said, and then people later on, it's proved it to be true, such as the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Bible clearly teaches that Jesus was in the grave for three days and three nights. Then early in the morning, it be, on the first day of the week, he rose up. Right? He got up like he said he would. The stone rolled away, and Jesus was no longer in the grave. Why? Because he said he would. And by faith, we've always believed that. And now some years ago, they'd gone and found that tomb, and they said, we know where Jesus was laid. And some kind of scientist guy he went and grabbed up some dirt and he studied it and he tested it and he said it, it's a fact nobody ever saw corruption in this tomb and all of God's people said amen they're shouting and guess what well, what when I heard that I wasn't trying to be super spiritual I just believed by faith that I, when I heard that I was like well duh I already knew that because the Bible says so and so by faith I believe it I guess it's been proven that there are certain whales that can swallow a man. But even if not, Mother Urgish, there were God prepared a great fish. And I believe by faith. But there's evidence that it can be done. Hey, what else? The world is round. Remind everybody the world. There are people dumb enough today, they're teaching the world's flat. And we have, we have airplanes that fly around the world taking pictures. You've been up in a plane. You see the circle of the earth. You know that it's a ball. You know, you know it's spinning on its axis as it rotates, uh, as it orbits around the sun. All these things that have been proven. But before that, the Bible told us that he sits on the circle of the earth. All these things that have been proven to be true, by faith first they were believed then the evidence comes and shows us the evidence always agrees with the Bible or they're wrong. Verse 3 uh, in, in Hebrews 11, through faith we understand the worlds were uh, formed by the Word of God, framed by the Word of God. By faith, you've heard this before, but people believe in evolution. By faith, we believe in, in, in creation. I mean, the reason they believe in evolution is because the textbook says so. I want to, uh, how's that, that uh, texting thing? I'm trying to catch up on them. I want to LOL when people say, well, you only believe the Bible. You can't believe the Bible was written by men. Well, why do you believe in, create, in, in evolution? Because my science textbook says so. Okay, well, who wrote that? Men, but, no, no, you don't get that. It, by faith, they believe by faith, we believe. But we believe in these things. The Bible says it, so we believe it. If it's written in the Bible, I'll believe it till I die. Have faith because the foundation, the introduction to faith. Number two, Hebrews 11, 6, I see the importance of faith. Some would argue that faith is not that important. Some would say, well, as long as you're born again, by the way, if you're not born again, that's the beginning of faith. You've got to buy, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that's wonderful, but then a lot of people who don't want to grow in their faith would say, well, I'm going to heaven, what other faith do I need? Faith is of utmost importance if you want to please God. Here's a problem with whatever century we're in Christianity is a lot of people just don't care about pleasing God. A lot of people know they're going to heaven, and that's all that matters to them. Well, no, wait a minute. We ought to, we ought to please Him who has chosen us to be a soldier. And if we're going to please God, we must have faith. But with verse uh, 6 of Hebrews 11, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. I would argue that if you want to please God, faith is important. Now faith, the saving faith you place in Jesus Christ, obviously that's important. But if you're going to please God in your Christian life and the things that you do for God, it's important to live by faith. If you look throughout Hebrews 11, you'll see this over and over again. By faith, 
they did this. Or through faith, they did that. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, the Bible says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. It's pretty, that sounds pretty important. Now don't take that too awful literally. I heard of a preacher that said that when he was in junior high school. He heard a message. We, we walk by faith. He, he thought he would try and ride his bicycle by faith. And riding down through somewhere uh, in Louisiana. Closed his eyes. Tried to ride his bicycle. Crashed his 10 speed twin bicycle with a great big banana seat. And ended up breaking some teeth and stuff like that. The Bible's not talking about doing that by faith. I know people that drive by faith. That's for sure. Uh, but understand this. We need to learn to live by faith. Sometimes faith involves just going on even when we can't or don't see the results. Here's where we fail quite often is we start out by faith doing something for God, but we don't see the results and therefore why is it worth it? This is hard! Okay, but faith isn't us seeing the results. You know why? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. If we're following the clear direction from the Word of God, we may not see the results this side of heaven. It involves just going on. I think who is it, Brother Han Raymond Hancock, that had that message. I think I'll just go on anyway. That's a good statement right there. I think I'll just go on anyway. But if we have to see, let me ask you this. How many of the dear saints of God listed in Hebrews 11, how many of them saw everything playing out in real time right before their eyes. I already mentioned this, but I'm glad I get to live in the day I get to live in. Amen. I'm glad that my little light can shine bright in a dark world. But some of the things the day we live in, some of the curses of the things that we have, now the things that we have aren't necessarily cursed. There's technology is wonderful if you know how to use it. Yeah. The only thing more wicked than technology is those who know how to fix bad technology. Because they know how to fix it, they know how to find the problems. And so that means they're, anyway. But a lot of these things where we could, the, the 24 hour, it used to be back in the day, you'd get a newspaper and it was, you know, oh, this is cool. That was a longer news cycle. And then the invent of TV and especially cable TV came the 24 hour news cycle. And now it's even, everybody wants to break everything so fast, they break breaking news before they've ever even found the facts out. Somebody say amen right now. And then they never say, oh, you know, we were wrong. Because they always want to be right now, right now, right now, right now. And we have fallen into that trap of, let me see something right now. Let me see it happen. Let me see it. In our Christian life, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes it takes years to see fruit of your labor. I'm praying that Yvonne and her husband will join the church. That would be that would be a few years of some labor. The Ergus has put in a few years ago. Not that they're old. I'm just saying a few years ago, they put in some labor there. And now, decades later, they might have one of their bus kids Amen. who's not a kid anymore. Be in church. Wouldn't that be great? That's what I'm talking about. You know what they could have said? You know what? This serving God stuff, whatever. I'm going to put it. I didn't see results right now, so I'm done forever. I'm not saying they've lived perfect their whole life, but at least they're faithful to the house of God saying, well, I'm just going to serve Him to the best of my ability now and just trust God that by faith that He'll take care of the results. The importance of faith. How about this? We're, we're halfway through the introduction. The implement, implementation of faith. Many examples, but first of all, Hebrews 11, 23 through 29 is a great example of a man that had a choice. 23 through 29, the story, we've read that just last week, I think it was about, or two weeks ago, about Moses. By faith, Moses. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. They were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, when he was... Now, come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Here's a great example of a man that had a choice. A great example of a man that had a choice. Live in the palace and enjoy sin for a season or by faith do what God had called and created him to do. By the way, we've all been created and called for a reason too. We will never truly find joy until by faith we implement faith in our lives and do what it is that God would have us to do. 
And some would say, but then I might not be happy. That just shows our ignorance and immaturity. As we grow in God, we understand that whatever it is God wants me to do will bring joy in my life. God knows what is best and we will enjoy His will. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and He delighteth in His way. We'll never add to our faith if we do not implement our faith in God. Get it going. How about this? Number four, immortality because of faith. We sure we have immortality in heaven because of faith. But go with me, please. First Corinthians chapter number 50. I'm sorry, chapter 15. There's not 51 chapters in there. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 through 54. First Corinthians 15, 51 through 54. There the Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on corruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up, in victory. I know we have immortality in heaven because of faith, but if I want to look at it this way, look at those here in the Bible and Hebrews 11 especially that are listed the things that they did by faith. They are immortalized forever. Now, I think I've made reference to this before. Those on this earth in the last hundred or so years that have done great things in sports realms, they're remembered forever or forever as long as people are alive in this thing called the Hall of Fame. But that's going by the wayside someday. But these guys in Hebrews 11, they'll be remembered forever because by faith they stepped out and did something. He, uh, Psalm 11989, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. That's just forever. That's not for a hundred years or for whatever, how long this world's going to be around, but forever in heaven we'll be able to pick up Hebrews 11 and here's an eight thing we'll get we'll be able to walk up and ask Moses so what was it like part in that Red Sea the three Hebrew children hey guys what was it like by faith saying the God that we serve is able to deliver us out of that and he will deliver us out of that hand O king by faith they didn't know that they were going to get out of the thing out of that burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us. I believe they thought he's going to deliver us or he'll deliver us by death, one of the two. What was it like to be thrown in there and to walk around having all your bands loose and walking around that burning fire furnace with God the Son himself and then come out? What was that like? We'll be able to see them and for all of eternity they'll be remembered as by faith. Now we shouldn't add to our faith so that others can see us but we should add to our faith so that people can see God use us and they will realize that God can use them as well. We ought to be challenged to live by faith because the Bible says it. Can I remind you though that we're also human beings and there have been many people in my life who I've watched step out by faith. It has been such a help to me and you can be a help to someone else simply by stepping out by faith. So we're challenged to add to our faith. And this is where I want to get tonight. How do we, how, so how do we add to our faith? Go to 1 Timothy chapter number 4, please. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. How do we add to our faith? Three things tonight. We'll look at two more or three more and then we'll go home. First of all, if you're going to add to your faith, you've got to exercise your faith. If anyone ever hopes to add to their muscle mass or lung capacity, they must exercise. And there will be additions in those areas. Okay? You're not, you're not going to bulk up any by just saying, boy, if I lift those weights, I'm going to get stronger. Now, you can know what will happen. Some of us don't need to bulk up. Some of us need to bulk down or just rearrange the bulk, I guess, be a good idea. 
But what I'm saying is, I know a lot of people that think, boy, I know if I go out there and lift so many, do so many reps and all, I'll be able to add and all this. And you know that, but unless you actually do it, it isn't going to happen. Same thing with our faith. 1 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, the Bible says, But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promised the life that now is and of that which is to come. By faith we can exercise our faith. Do some things for God that make you uncomfortable. Has anybody else tried to exercise physically? And I've got a, a one that I try and I try and exercise with. And there's a disclaimer on it that says, if this causes any discomfort, stop doing it. Well, then I'm not going to do anything because it causes discomfort. They're trying to cover themselves from a lawsuit. But when you, the only way to get stronger is to bring some discomfort to your muscles. The only way to grow your lung capacity is to run until you can't run anymore, like from here to the front door, and then run a little bit farther and build that up a little bit more. That makes sense, doesn't it? If you can make it a mile, if you want, that knucklehead that leads the music wants to run a marathon. Go ahead. I'm not helping you. Now, I might drive beside him, that's fine. Ride my bike, my motorcycle beside him, and that's fine. But I guarantee you right now, his lung capacity isn't at 26 point whatever. When you get over two miles, I'm thinking that's crazy. 26 miles, if he's going to accomplish that, and I hope he does, by the way, be wonderful. But his lung, he'd have to make himself, I can go this far, now I've got to go a little bit more. I go a little bit more. What I'm saying is, if you're going to physically exercise, you have to make yourself uncomfortable. Amen. Because you know I'm going to tell you something else about making yourself uncomfortably spiritually. If you're going to exercise spiritually, you're going to have to do some things that make you uncomfortable. Here's one that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Hi, we're from True Life Baptist Church. If you died today, you're 100% sure you'd go to heaven. That's very uncomfortable. Yes. Pastor Di, I don't know how, if it gets easy over time. I've been soul winning for a number of years now. But for me, I've been soul winning for a few years now. And it's still uncomfortable for me. Some people can talk to anybody. You know, they say the nut doesn't fall, fall. The nut doesn't fall very far from the tree. Well, this nut fell far from that tree because my dad can talk to anybody about anything for quite some time. I don't have that same gift and talent or whatever. I'm very nervous about talking to strangers. But if I'm going to exercise spiritually, I've got to say, you know what? It might make me uncomfortable, but if my faith is going to grow, if I'm going to add to my faith, I've got to learn to get over being uncomfortable. You know, the one, of course, you want to do that, but if you can't do that, this isn't a gospel track, it's a prayer card, but I'm going to use that as an example. If you're not ready to go knock on doors yet, just grab some gospel tracks and hand it to somebody. That's not easy to do. It's funny how if we're handing out advertisements for anything else, it's simple to do. When we start handing out gospel tracts, it becomes hard. It's because our flesh gets involved with something spiritual. And here's one way to get somebody to at least look at the track. Walk up, hand it to them, and run away real fast. They'll either drop it or they'll look at it and say, what in the world did that person give me? Hand out a gospel track. Here's something else you can exercise your faith. Sing in the choir. Sing a special. Start a group. Sing a solo. This is fun. Here's something that we can exercise our faith. Give more to the general fund. Give more to missions. Give to the building fund. Work on a bus. Say amen in church. Here's one. Smile in church. Exercise your faith. It will not be added to. Your faith will not grow unless we exercise our faith. Number two, way to grow our faith is through encouragement. Encouragement. We'll add to our faith as we spend time in prayer and Bible study. These are the ultimate sources of encouragement. We can also receive encouragement for other believers. That's what I'm trying to do for the next, the last couple of weeks, the next few weeks perhaps, is encourage you to live by faith. 
Sometimes the encouragement is like we mentioned here last week where you've got to be encouraged through some interesting methods. Let's just allow God to encourage us. We'll step out by faith. We can re also be encouraged as we see others grow or get saved or even those that get mad at us for exercising our faith. When somebody gets mad at you for telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ, you can let that, let your flesh get mad or you can say, you know what, that's just another way of me being encouraged to live for God through the exercising of my faith. If you aren't going to exercise your faith, at least encourage those that do. At the very least, don't discourage them or weigh them down with your discouragement. Encouragement will add to faith. Some years ago, when I, when I was uh, at Rio Grande Baptist, I got all excited about a revival meeting we were getting ready to have. And I had just heard, heard or read, I think I had read a book, I think I read a, that's a good thing to read, is a book, but I think it was something I was reading from John Rice, and he said as he was a young evangelist, he said they're having a meeting, he said I went out and I printed out 10,000, he called them handbills, they're kind of like gospel tracts or invitations, he said I, I printed out 10,000 of those, and I went around the city and invited everybody I possibly could, and had help getting all of those out, and I thought well, if it worked back then, it could work today. So I tried to get some people together and let's get 10,000 flyers for this upcoming revival meeting. And I was all excited. And I went to one of the people in the church. I'm not going to say who it was because there's people here tonight that would know exactly who this was. And here was the response. We tried that before. It won't work. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. You know what we did? We still went out and handed out 10,000 handbills. And I believe God blessed. We didn't have 10,000 people come to the revival meeting. But what, what it taught me was this. Yeah, sure. I might, I, I, I don't, if somebody else gets on fire for God and they're going to, what's wrong with handing out 10,000 handbills? Nothing. I'm not going to tell them, oh, that'll never work. No, let's do it and see what God can do. Now, if it's if obviously if it's crazy, if it's unscriptural, I'll encourage them not to do it. But I'm not going to throw a bucket of water on somebody who wants to exercise their faith. Number three way we grow our faith is a lack of entanglements. You're in First Timothy. Go to Second Timothy, chapter number two and verse number four. A lack of entanglements. Right. Hebrews 12:1 reminds us of the laying aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. I'll tell you this, if Brian does train for that uh, marathon, part of training would be putting the weight on. And that's fine, but he'd be completely knuckleheaded if the day came and he said, I'm going to put even more weight on. Well, you train with the weight, but when, it, when, the, when the time comes to run the race, you get rid of all the weight you possibly can. The Olympics are getting ready to, to go now. You won't see any hurdler putting weights on. You see them getting rid of the weights so they can run better. We need, it, it, child of God, we, we do that though. We don't think about it that way. But we let all these en entanglements get on us and all over us and they mess us up, but we don't look at them as weights. 2 Timothy 2 4, the Bible says this. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. That he may please him. How about Hebrews 11.6? It is impossible to please him without faith. And if we're going to please him, we can't have entanglements. Things that are slowing us down. That's why I don't frequent rodeos as much as I used to. I like rodeos. They're, they're wonderful. I think one of the best things about rodeos are the wrecks at rodeos. A good friend of mine years ago that I, I watched him get drug around the arena a few times. It wasn't one of his worst wrecks. Uh, he was drug around once like four laps around the arena by a uh, uh, saddle bronc horse and the his hand was stuck, his bare back, his hand was stuck in the rig and couldn't get out. The way he finally got out was that horse was jumping and kicking, and this guy's flopping all over the place. The horse jumped out and hit him with both hoofs right on top of the head. His hand jerked out of the rig and he was fine. Well, he was hit on the head, 
Was he messed up? He was messed up before he got hit on the head. I've seen a lot of things, but and I, I love that kind of stuff. I've had people invite me to go out and help them uh, ride and gather and do things like that. I would love to, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you know what it is to me? It's an entanglement. Little League Baseball can be an entanglement. There's a lot of things. What's wrong with League Baseball? Nothing. It's fun to watch dads beat each other up over a strike call. But all these things, whatever, there, there's hobbies. Like, like, I love hunting. Well, listen, I love when people go hunting and they offer to give me food. I love elk meat, deer meat. And I, it's great. I, but those entanglements, they can get us out of the will of God. Very hard to exercise when loaded down with things that will not help us spiritually. You'll be surprised how much God will add to your faith as you get rid of entanglements. What in your life, church, what in your life is holding you back from serving God? I'm hoping right now you're doing some inventory and saying, well, I, I don't think there's a whole lot. Then praise God for that. Then are you exercising your faith? Some of us, that's all we can exercise anymore is faith. Exercise your faith. Implement your faith. In 2 Peter, let's close by just bringing up three things real quick. In 2 Peter, Peter tells us to add to our faith. 2 Peter 1, 5 and 6. 2 Peter 1, 5 and 6. Peter tells us to add to your faith. I think here's the key too, as I already mentioned this, let's hit on it just real quick one more time. And beside this, kind of not forgetting, but let's move on to the next thing. And besides this, giving all diligence. That's where we fail a lot of times in adding to our faith, is we don't give all diligence. Giving all diligence, add to your faith. And he goes on to tell all things we should add. Peter tells us to add to our faith. Then in 2 Corinthians 8, 11, Paul tells us to act upon our faith. 2 Corinthians 8, 11, the Bible says, Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which he had. We're supposed to act upon what God has wanted us to do. We need to add to our faith. We need to act upon our faith. And then back in 2 Peter 1, 8, Peter tells us about the effect of our faith. 2 Peter 1, 8, For if these things be in you, and I know we list all the things we're supposed to add, but if we don't have a strong faith, adding all these things will just fall apart like a house of cards. But if for if these things be in you and abound... They make you that ye shall neither, neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you okay with being barren and unfruitful? If you're okay with that, if you're okay with getting to the judgment seat of Christ and having nothing to show for our years since salvation, then you don't need to add to your faith. But if you want to please Him who has chosen you to be a soldier, if you want to please God, then we must add to our faith. If we want to stand there before the judgment seat of Christ and say, God, all that I have is by Your glory, but by faith I stepped out by Your grace, and I stepped out by faith and did what You have me to do. God, I tried to live by faith. If you're concerned about having a good judgment seat, you need to learn to add to your faith. If you're going to add to your faith, you've got to exercise your faith. So glad you're here on a Sunday night. And that's a good exercising part, but I've noticed this. If I exercise two times a week, it doesn't do much good. If I exercise three times a week, it, okay, but still doesn't do what I need to get done. But if I'm exercising daily, physically it's going to help me out. If I exercise, why, you know why I said three times a week, right? Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Okay, just so we remember, that's a great start. That's going to help. But there's Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. What about Monday and Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday? 
need to exercise our faith those days as well. Right. Exercise our faith. Implement your faith. Start following and doing what God would have us to do. And then get rid of the entanglements to grow our faith. Father, thank you for your word. Pray and speak to hearts tonight, God, that we would, that we would follow the commandment that you gave us in the Bible to add to our faith. We're thankful for that saving faith, God, that the day we trusted Christ as Savior, if there's any among us tonight that have not done that, pray, God, that first of all, they'd exercise that faith in you for the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But help us, God, that we would learn to add to our faith, grow our faith, please, God. Help us to do, get out of our comfort zone and live by faith so you can grow our faith even more. Speak to our hearts tonight, I pray, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If God spoke to your heart tonight, you come use the altars. The music begins to play. We invite you to come. Maybe just pour your heart out to God. God, I'm, I'm strong with this thing of living by faith. That's a good, a good start to make because then we know we need some help. Exercise that faith. I already mentioned this, but do something that you're uncomfortable with. Read through your Bible in a year. I've already done that. Praise God. Read through it a couple times in a year. If you've got the time, read through it in a month. Give out the gospel a certain amount of times in a year. That's hard to do. I know. But let's exercise our faith so our faith can grow. I really enjoy the Olympics because I, I like athletics that, that just stuff kind of thrills me these guys train for years and years and years I think it was that sprinter from Jamaica Usain Bolt that said he I trained four years for less than 10 seconds and some people aren't willing to train for a few days for something something like that was his quote think about that this guy trained four years to run less than 10 seconds child of God we need to be training our entire life for this thing of living by faith and if we don't see results, I mean, God's, God's good enough to us. He'll let us see results. But we'll never know the full results of our living by faith till we get to heaven. To those folks who slam the door on our face, call us all sorts of interesting names, they're waiting there for us in heaven. I don't know if every one of them will be, but I know the ones that we don't take the gospel to by faith. How are they going to hear? Well, it's not easy get going out to a lost and dying world, especially a world that now I'm being trained to hate religion. Two weeks ago, uh, both me and Brian got the same text from a very polite person that said, leave me alone. You guys came to my house, leave me alone. Okay. People are going to be like that, but we'll just pray that we see them in heaven someday. Exercise, add to your faith. We're going to sing a song on the way out, number 19 again. That we have this morning, number 19, Sinner, Save My Grace. We'll leave both verses to be dismissed tonight. And also, do be in prayer, please. Don't wait until Wednesday to pray for the young people. Pray. Begin praying tonight for the young people heading to the youth conference uh, this Wednesday, number 19.